I will now discuss on a very interesting topic and fascinating topic that is MEMS for biomedical applications. And you know if something is used for human body for biological application, so you have to take 100 percent precaution before using it in any of the animals or any of the biological system because you cannot make harm to the system for your devices which you are intend to use for certain application they may not deteriorate the functioning of the existing living beings. At the same time you should not do something which will create some problem in the environment also. So, that is why like other sensors which are being used in case of avionics, in case of automobiles, in case of say space or in case of industrial control or entertainment or IT whatever it is. So, those sensors are I agree that those sensors are high precision and good quality, but those are not dealing with directly the biological system or any of the living being organism. But if you go for using a particular sensors and actuators for living beings, so he has to qualify other aspects also. Those aspects are mainly it has to be biocompatible, but what is that? That is if you are going to reduce certain diseases or remove certain diseases in a living body or human being. So, the methods you are going to adopt they cannot call for other problems in the human body. So, that is the point you have to take care. So, that is why the in case of biological system the MEMS which are coming up for biological application real life practical testing is becoming more and more difficult until all this you get permission from different different government bodies or authorities who control the, the biological uh, medicines or uh, any kind of the biological interaction. So, their clearance is required before you go for testing of those devices. So, we will just see now in this lecture how the MEMS device is going to play a major role in different biological functioning and how it can be used for diagnostic purpose in a in a fascinating way in a very challenging way. Now, if you look into the bio MEMS, biological MEMS application is sometimes called is a bio MEMS. So, in bio MEMS what are the different things coming into the picture? Here you can see first is the micro nano fabrication and in the middle is that engineering technology and life science circle is there in the life science and engineering technology we are adopting and now lot of permutation combinations are going on lot of evolutions are taking place and what the input to this evolution to this research one is materials and interface another is chemistry and microbiology and characterization technology. So, these are the various inputs micro and nano fabrication the basic thing because of which you are getting the MEM sensors and then evolution is possible that means improvement evolution means in positive direction. For that you need thoroughly the knowledge or understanding of materials which you are going to use for biological application and they are interfacing with the biological system. Chemistry you have to know particularly microbiology biochemistry you have a good knowledge on that and characterization technology. This characterization technology in many cases should be non evasive. So, those kinds of things you have to keep in mind. So, all these things makes the bio MEMS area more challenging. Now, biotechnology encompasses what one is micro and nano fabrication as I showed you. MEMS and NEMS micro electromechanical systems and NEMS is nano electromechanical systems. Biological and chemical systems ranging from cellular to molecular level you have to go to the cell level 
what chemistry is going on. Molecular level you have to see something, if you go for DNA research or gene research then you have to understand the microbiology fully. Techniques and materials to interface the biological and synthetic world. So, interface is another point because some ultimately diagnostic and controlling part will be electronic, but which you are going to implant the devices into the human or any living body. So, they are mostly they are synthetic or polymeric in nature, many of the metallic structure you cannot use inside the body which will deteriorate which will react with lot of systems. And characterization of such hybrid bioelectronic system, bioelectronic system characterization how do you get output of that and how do you modify those things is for that you need the characterization of the complete system. Now, what is the definition of biomems? Lot of scientists in that area, they put forward a lot of definitions. I have quoted some of the definitions here. One is from Basir from Purdue University. According to him, the devices or systems constructed using techniques inspired from micro nanoscale fabrication that are used for processing, delivery, manipulation, analysis or construction of biological and chemical entities. These are biomems. On the other hand, some other scientists in 2000, they define biosensors as their analytical devices that combine a biologically sensitive element with a physical or chemical transducer to selectively and quantitatively detect the presence of specific compounds in a given external environment. This is another definition. So, ultimately what biochips can do? Biochips can detect cells, microorganisms, viruses, proteins, DNA and small molecules of biomedical importance and interest. So, your system should be such that the micro system or micro sensor, they can detect all those kinds of things. What are the applicant ranges of biomems? In case of diagnostics such as DNA and protein microarrays, microfluidics, tissue engineering, drug delivery systems, implantable biomems, these are different application ranges of biosensors. The working environment of the biomems is shown in this particular picture, where you can see some extra precautions has been taken to protect the workers or researchers, because you are dealing with some of the chemicals, some of the viruses which are which may be dangerous to mankind. So, if you are dealing with those, those viruses or the chemicals or proteins whatever it is which may be harmful to human body, you have to take that precautions those who are working with on the, the gene therapy or the genomics and proteinomics, gene transfection. So, they have to take care a lot before handling those kind of the elements for characterization and testing. Now, before going to little bit in detail of the sensors, here are some of the biomems devices which are marketed, those are shown in this slide. First one is from University of Michigan, second one is from University of Stanford, this is a neuroprobes for neurological application. And third one is Max Planck Institute. These are some of the cells for testing certain diagnostic purpose. Here from Kumetrix some player in the biomems area, you can see they have devised a micro needle and this micro needle and in the 
other side is the here those dimension if the tip of the micro needle is smaller much much smaller than the tip uh, than the uh, than that of the hair dimension. So, that micro needle has been fabricated using silicon micro machining technology. Some silicon biochips have been reported from Purdue University that is also shown here and for IBM Zurich research lab you can see some of the cantilever structures which are used for biomechanics also. So, these are some of the research results from various laboratories around the globe who are working since last 5-10 years on various areas of the biosensors. Some other finished product from companies are shown here. One is the cartridge biomedical cartridge from nanogen, some is, is immuno chip, this one is immuno chip from Aclara, here is PDMS glass microfluidic biochip and this is lab on chip from Calipar. So, these are some finished products from the companies. Now, what are the different aspects of biomems? One is materials obviously and in biological application silicon although it is used, but it is not a good choice of material which can be implanted into the human body. Some other microelectric materials people are looking for those are glass and quartz. Some of the MEMS or biochips which are used for external diagnostic purpose or reaction purpose, those you can make use of quartz or glass or silicon etcetera, but the problem comes if you want to implant some of the chips into the living body or living animals or human, human body whatever it is. Now, biological entities those are cells, proteins and DNA, polymers is most favorable material for biomems application. Some of our polydimethyl siloxane that is PDMS, another is methyl methacrylate which is PMMA, teflon these are some of the common polymers which are used in biological mems. And the commercial players on biological MEMS are Nanogen who are producing chip based assays on chip DNA hybridization and optical detection, Shephoid DNA detection on a micro scale for diagnostic military and food safety applications, Affymetrix chip based assays on chip DNA hybridization and optical detection, HP and Caliper chip based capillary electrophoresis, Motorola open a bio biochip division separately, Hitachi, IBM, TI, HP they are in the line and they are concentrating on DNA and protein chip. Now, I will discuss the few applications of biomems. First, I will attack on biomechanics, micro sensors for biomechanics. So, for biomechanics one sensor is very much used that is is a strain gauge. Strain gauge is basically made using piezoresistive mechanism of the silicon sensor. Silicon is a piezoresistive material you know that is basically used to characterize the forces in the body motion. In the body in muscle there are a lot of mechanical movement of the muscles and if you want to monitor the movements of the muscle, so you need the strain gauges. So, strain gauge if you attached on any muscle and then because of the forces in the muscle, so the strain will be developed and that if it is the piezoresistive, so that can give certain output. Another application of the strain gauges are orthopedic in orthopedic research and the study of muscles in between cellular level, particularly muscles 
which are in between cell those characterization is very important in many cases. And in between cell muscle movement and their characterization is possible with micro miniaturized strain gauges which can be implanted in the particular location. So, MEMS miniaturization has made it possible to make the micro strain gauge which can be implanted in different locations even in the muscles which are in inter, inter uh, in between cellular cells. Third application is understanding intercellular muscle function which would allow the development of improved locomotion therapies and prosthetic devices. Locomotion therapy and prosthetic devices for that you need that the strain gauges. Accelerometer that is also used in biological application. Accelerometer how it is made already I discussed in detail. These sensors are useful to determine impact level and patient posture. Impact level suddenly you are hitting on a certain muscle what is the impact there is sudden impact and that can be sensed by inner cell sensors. And what is the attitude of the posture of the patient? If you give an impulse on a particular muscle or particular uh, section of a, any uh, of your body, so that can be properly diagnosed with the help of the accelerometers or any gyros, both the sensors are used in case of the biological application. Now, micro sensors for pneumatic biosystems. They use pressure sensors. We know that human body is a complex system of pumps, valves, vessels and interconnects. Heart is a example of pumps. Valves are there, lot of valves are there. You know during passage of your fluids which may be blood also in the human body. Interconnect and vessels means tubes the arteries and veins lot of those are interconnect of the fluids. Even urology there are lot of interconnects and vessels are there for culturing urine and for disperse the urine not only that the water is also extracted in some cases. Those cases they require the pressure sensor wherever is the pump, where is the valve, what is the pressure generated from the pump or valve that has to be monitored. For that you need pressure sensor. Health monitoring of a patient requires knowledge of blood pressure, bladder pressure and cerebral spinal fluid pressure. These are the three important aspects blood pressure, bladder pressure and cerebral spinal fluid pressure. Those can be precisely monitored with the help of high precision pressure sensors. Pressure sensors are inserted into the body that must be very small and is to be disposable. Because once you use in a certain section to measure the pressure of a bladder, the same sensor cannot be used in other place which is say for, for example, for measuring the cerebral spine, spinal fluid pressure. So, those kinds of sensors must be disposable kind of thing. In this aspect in a pneumatic biosystems, Lucas Nova sensors are going far ahead for marketing devices and in this picture you can see the pressure sensors of different sizes and some of the sensors are highly miniaturized so that easily you can implant those sensors even in cerebral spinal fluid uh, spinal uh, fluid channel location. So, the sensors of smallest size of the order of 175 micrometer by 700 micrometer by 1000 micrometer is reported from the Lucas Nova sensors. And those kind of sensors can be inserted into catheter and into arteries. So, in the tip of the catheter you can put those miniaturized pressure sensor 
and you can you can push the whole thing into the arteries because its dimension is negligible in comparison to the channel inside the arteries. So, those are some of the uh, application of the pressure sensors in pneumatic biosystems. Now, coming microsensors for chemical biosystem. Living organisms are extremely sophisticated and they are extremely uh, uh, high sensing uh, molecules living organisms. And if you want to make some reaction with the chemi uh, with some chemicals, so you have to do it with lot of precautions and care. Lot of applications in medical diagnostic instruments are there for the chemical biosystems. They are drug screening, implantable sensors for prosthesis and environment monitoring. Challenges lies here the delivery, reaction control and waste disposal. For example, if you want to diagnose something and you want to implant something into the body. So, major problem is delivery because how the chemicals will be delivered into that particular location. Then after delivering these chemicals into a living organism, then the how can you control the reaction? If the reaction is not favorable to the patient, then you have to control it, you have to stop it, how can you do it? That is another challenge. And third one is waste disposal. Since it is a chemi chemical reaction with the living organism, some byproduct will be there. If that byproduct is not friendly to the human body, how can you remove those byproducts? That is waste disposal, that is another problem. In this direction for chemical biosystem, some sensors are used which are resistance type impedance sensors. And what is impedance sensor? Those are basically the impedance or rather the resistances will change with absorption or in certain chemicals into the living organism gases or vapors and their relative concentration can change the conductivity of some materials for example, conductive polymers and metal oxide. There are certain polymers I can name one polymer also which is polypyrrole. That polymer is a conductive polymer and it is directly used as chemi resistor. There are two things happening in case of polymer if gas is absorbed. One is the conductive polymer is conductivity changes if gas is absorbed and the second is if some gas is absorbed by polymer it swells. It is swelling means it is volume changes. Now you see there are two kinds of the mechanisms you can you can get from here once you can from the conductive uh, change or resistance change of the polymer directly you can reflect into your voltage signal and by absorption of certain chemicals or gases or vapors if the if it swells then you can make a capacitance also and then you have to have not conductive but insulating polymer as a dielectric and if you have conducting polymer on both sides as a electrode, then on absorption of gas if it swells, then automatically the capacitance, capacitance will change. So, in both directions people are working and they are making lot of sensors, which are used as a gas sensor. One because lot of gases are there evolved in your human body in system also. So, you have to sense that gases, but the problem there are two problems. One is the type of gases which gas is evolving and another is the concentration of gas molecules. Two things are important. In some cases, the concentration can be directly measured 
with the the swelling how much swelling in capacitive type of sensors how much it swells with concentration. And the second because if you want the selective selectivity that means, which gas is evolving then you need the knowledge of polymers which reacts with which gases. In those cases in those cases single polymer sensor may not use may not be useful you have to have a array of sensors for different kind of polymer and you have to know beforehand which polymer can react with which kind of gases. So, accordingly both the things are available which kind of gas and how much concentration of gas is available with this kind of polymer gas polymer based gas sensors. Now, many polymers will geometrically swell reversibly when exposed to a certain gases swelling to a greater or lesser extent depends on variety of gases. Now, one important point is mentioned here swell reversible. It is not that once it swell expand it cannot contract both should be possible. When the gas concentration is more it swells, when it is less it may contract swells means it may expand or it can reduce the volume. So, both are required. A conducting polymer as I mentioned polypyrrole is used for this purpose. Insulating polymers are doped with conductive particles like carbon black to reduce their conductivity. Basically you can start with an insulating polymer and by adding or implanting many of conductive particles like carbon black you can reduce their conductivity also. Resistance of doped polymers will change as a function of chemically specific and concentration dependent swelling. One is chemical specific, other is concentration dependent swelling. You see, both things are important. One should be chemically specific polymer, another is concentration dependent swelling, so that you can know type as well as concentration both. Now, some of the sensors which has been reported by Zudi et al in 1999 are shown in this diagram. Certain diseases cause the body to generate specific gases that are not normally present gas. Normally those gases are not present, but certain disease can generate those gases and gas sensors of this kind may help diagnose particular patient cells. A response pattern, what is the response pattern? One is conductivity change, another is the swelling, these are the response pattern of different polymer is needed to identify specific gases. So, if you want to identify specific gas you have to have the response pattern beforehand otherwise you cannot identify the type of gases. Capacitively detect detection of swelling may also be used for detection and concentration of gases and that I just told you you can evaluate for photo resist. You see here you can make a group and in that group you can make the solvent which is the basically polymer solvent and if you want to change its conductivity you can put some carbon black polymer field on top of the, the well which contains the solvent. So, these wells are micro wells are created to have the to contain the solvent and to react with the gases. So, these are some of the gas sensors. Now, I will talk little bit on electrochemical sensors and electrochemical sensor basically oxidation reduction of chemical species on a conducting electron is done there that is detected and there the oxidation reduction of the chemical species what will happen due to that charge will be generated and the movement of the charge and if the charge moves they can be sensed by two ways one is known as a potentiometric way which basically potential difference potential dependent on chemistry and the another is ampliometric way 
current generated by reaction. There are two kind of sensing. One kind is known as proteometric sensing and other kind is known as ampliometric sensing. Micromachining processes can be used to accurately and reliable, reliably define the area, number and relative position of electrodes that are exposed to the solution. So, here comes your micromachining technology with specific because here you are going to have electrodes and those electrodes are inserted in a chemical where a reaction with the chemicals, those reactions are oxidation reduction reactions and their charges will move from one electrode to other electrode and the movement of the charge will either reflect it to the voltage change which is known as proteometric sensing and also it can be reflected to current change which is known as ampliometric sensing. So, these are the basic principle of the electrochemical sensor and here your requirement is to accurately design and fabricate the electrodes, micro electrodes. And some of the examples in this direction are glucose oxidase enzyme to detect glucose in a blood how much glucose is there that can be easily detected by this technique using oxidation reaction, reaction using some enzyme. So, this is known as glucose oxidase enzyme to detect glucose. Here the enzyme which is typically immobilized immobil that is immobilized on or near electrodes it reacts with glucose and alters the local pH value oxygen concentration and hydrogen peroxide concentration. So, this can be used for glucose sensor. Those events can be electrochemically detected that is glucose oxidase enzyme reaction. Next kind of sensor I would like to discuss is molecular specific sensor. One example is ISPET. What is that? Ion sensitive FET. Field effect transistor you know source, drain and gate these three are, three, three are the electrodes. So, now the performance of the MOS device depends greatly on the MOS uh, on the gate electrode this voltage on the gate electrode. Now, in this kind of the ISPET what is being done the gate is not normal the silicon gate or polysilicon metal gate gate is ionic gate basically an ionic solution they act as a gate. Ionic solution means it will have lot of ions. If the ions changes, their concentration changes, automatically it will have great influence on the performance of the MOSFET. In earlier, we used to apply certain voltage on the gate electrode. Instead of that, we are, we are using an, a chamber which contains some ionic solution. So, that ion means some charges will be there on the gate and that is going to influence the source to drain, uh, drain to source currents in a MOSFET. So, that ionic solution acts as a gate of an FET which makes the device sensitive to the overall ion concentration of the solution, not selective to specific ions in that case. Because depending on the concentration of the ionic concentration in the solution, you can get the the drain currents and other things. It is it can be used a good pH sensor and already pH sensor is made using this technology is spread technology, but we are interested not only the concentration of ion, we are interested also to detect the specific ions. How can you do that? That is also possible which is known as ion selective FET. For that, what you have to do? You have to coat the gate of the FET with certain compound and that compound will attract selectively or bind some of the molecules or ions from the solution. Then it will be ion selective. That means, if you can make 
the gate with an electrode which is coated with certain compound and those compounds selectively bind the ions from the ionic solution. Then if these ions are not bind to the gate electrode, so then that is not going to influence the is fed current. So, in that way you can make this is fed ion selective also, but the main challenges here are drift and repeatability in this kind of is fed sensors. So, is fed is a very popular device in molecular specific sensor. Now, another molecular specific sensor is a resonant sensor. Examples are saw surface acoustic wave sensors to detect liquid density and viscosity of the fluid. The resonant sensor are also used as a uh, uh, it is made biocompatible, so that it can be directly used with the, the microorganism and ionic solutions bio, uh, uh, biofluids, it can be directly used. And what are the resonant structure? The resonant structure will have certain mass also, some flexures or those flexures may be membrane or it may be cantilever or it may be beam these are the resonating element. Those resonating elements what you can do you can miniaturize those elements and those elements can be used to selectively react with certain, certain ions. You can coat those resonating elements with certain combine, compound and that compound will selectively bind to only one specific ions or molecule then what will happen? If those resonator will attract some specific ions or molecules, then the mass of that resonator will increase and because of the change of mass, its resonance frequency also will change. So, that is the principle used in this kind of resonance sensors, where we can fabricate accurately some resonating structures and those structures may be membrane, may be cantilever may be beams. Now, those beams or cantilevers are coated with certain compound, those compounds will attract certain specific ions or molecules and when these are attached or bind on the surface of those micro mechanical structures, then automatically its mass will increase and as a result of which the resonance frequency will change. So, that is the mechanism which is used in this kind of the resonance sensors which are used in biomedical application. Ion concentration, the concentration dependent mass loading can be determined by measuring the corresponding shift in the resonance frequency that is the basic principle. Here the challenges are temperature sensitivity, ion selectivity reversibility of the binding and mass loading process. Reversibility of the binding is a major problem because once it is attached to a particular electrode, how can you detach it? So, that is the problem. So, those challenges you have to sort it before practically use of those uh, sensors in biological or biomedical application. Now, Micro sensors for electrical biosystems. Primary electrical biosystems of interest are central and peripheral nervous systems, these are of primary interest. Sensors and probes have been used to measure the electrical signals generated by neural tissues. Neural tissues they generate electrical signal, and those signals are sensed or probes using certain micro probes. And here the examples in this direction are electrocardiogram which is known as ECG, electroencephalogram which is known as EFG, electroneurogram which is known as ENG, electromyogram that is known as EMG 
and electro retinogram that is known as ERG. So, these are various kinds of sensors which are based on electrical bio systems, they are ECG, EFG, ENG, EMG and ERG. Now, some of the examples are shown here. Bioelectrical signals are typically transduced with their with either internal or external electrodes. In what way MEMS are coming into the picture? MEMS are coming into the picture in this particular cases in fabrication of micro probes, micro probe or micro electrodes on a single substrate, which can penetrate the tissue without disturbing the tissue. So, here you can see some of the pictures, the array of microfabricated silicon neural probes. So, these tips are you can imagine is of the order of few micron, maybe 5 to 10 micron, this length is 300 micron. Now, if you compare the tip with this length, so you easily you can see it is of the order of so 5 to 10 micrometer only. So, this small tip this basically electrode and that and its tip is micro needle kind of thing that you can that can easily be penetrated into the probes in, into the neurons without damaging it and you can collect the electrical signals from the neuron for diagnostic purposes. Whether it is a retina or it is a heart or is other body in, in, in all those cases the electrical signals can be tapped with the help of this neuron neural probes and after that you can process the signal for diagnostic purposes. Another technique which is used sometimes, they use perforated membrane and those perforated membranes are implanted into that these uh, into those uh, into the areas whose or in which place you want to make certain monitoring of you want to make some or you want to monitor the neuron behavior or its growth. In that case, if you implant those membrane, they in those membranes the regenerated neural tissue will be will be formed and they can grow and they can come across through the membranes, small membranes and which you can easily monitor for your diagnostic purposes. In that area, lot of applications are there. What are the applications are mentioned here? Micromachine neural probes and stimulators are used to control prosthetic limbs with processed signals recorded from the brain or spinal column. Micro probes can be tailored to the physical and temporal dimensions of individual cells. That means, depending on your application, you can tailor the size of the probes also. Neuroscientists can now realistically envision sensing devices that allow a real time measurement at cellular level. At a cell level, these probes can get the signal. So, you can get the real time measurements at the cell level easily using this using the uh, uh, using this micro probes which are made using micro machining technology. Information from such sensors could be monitored, it could be analyzed and used as a basis of experimental or biomedical intervention. So, these are the applications of micro probes. Now, I will discuss on micro actuators. Some of the sensors which are used in biomedical application I told you. Now, let us see how the micro, micro actuators are formed and how they are used in biomedical uh, scenario. Biomedical actuators are used to control the biological objects or their environment 
on microscopic scale. First example is micro manipulators. What are the job of the micro manipulators? Micro manipulators are driven by a micro actuation mechanism capable of operating in a conductive solution. So, that means micro actuation mechanism. How this micro actuation mechanism can be achieved? For them, good candidates are magnetic, pneumatic, thermal, and safe memory alloy. These are good candidates for micro actuation in micro manipulators. And now, some pictures are shown in this view graph, which are micro actuators. First one is basically is a magnetic micro actuator, which is used for manipulating a single cell protozoa in saline water. It is a magnetic micro actuator, it is again taken from Judy 1995, he is from University of California and they are pioneering in this particular magnetic micro actuator research. In other is micro gripper, which is used for surgical application micro surgery and any kind of surgical application grippers are important uh, tools and they are used or they are made using safe memory alloy, safe memory forces. This particular micro actuator is capable of grasping tissues during endoscopic surgical procedures. So, endoscopic surgical operation, this kind of micro actuators, which is based on same memory alloy principle, is nowadays used in, in operation theaters also. Some other surgical micro instruments are also discussed. The capability of most micro actuators to surgical, surgically interact with biological tissues is hindered by their inability to withstand forces on the scale of 1 milli Newton, because those micro actuators and manipulators, they are not capable of higher forces. If you have some gripper or, or some tweezer, so they should be there, they should be capable of uh, holding something, grip something with more, with, with more force, but most of the cases at the beginning we found that the, the problem is the generation or withstanding more forces that is not more than 1 milli Newton. Recently high force small displacement stepper motors are used or resonant micro actuators are used for micro actuation in surgical devices. One is small size stepper motors or resonant micro actuators. So, there you can have larger force if you work in the resonant mode that is one of the solution people are looking for. MEMS technology offers a variety of capabilities to surgical micro instruments for example, micro heaters, micro sensors, fluid delivery, fluid extraction, feedback and control system. In those cases, basically the MEMS devices are coming into the picture in surgical environment. Now, here again some of the pictures which shows the some of the micro instruments. In the left side, you can see one scalpel. That's, that scalpel is basically driven with the piezoelectric forces and the piezoelectric stepper motor allows the position the scalpel to precisely control. This is one of the scalpel used in microsurgery and other picture shows some of the cutting tools which are used in microsurgery and those are based on ultrasonic vibration. The micro machine ultrasonic cutting tools 
they are fabricated from bulk micro machining. Piezoelectric material is attached to the cutter to resonate the tip of the tool, because for resonance here you have to have some piezoelectric material, which will be which will which will be resonating by application of certain electric field. So, those piezoelectric materials are coated at the tip of this cutting tool and they are forced to vibrate in with the help of ultrasonic uh, source or ultrasonic uh, energy is given to those tools, so that it can vibrate with ultrasonic frequencies. And nowadays, the cutting tools are available using this technique made using this technique, they can even cut tough tissues like cataract in your uh, the optical uh, or, or in ophthalmology, ophthalmology, they can they are highly used for removing any cataracts. They are basically hard lens, they are lens basically is made of hard tissues. Those tissues can be cut using the those the ultrasonic cutting tools. So, these are some of the applications towards the surgical and microactuators I just mentioned here. Others are again some kind of valves are shown here, some kinds of needles are also shown here. You can see the diagram in the left side, these are the conventional needle which is nearly 30 gauge needle. You can see here, so in center there is a hole and through that hole some fluid can come and this is the tip of the needle. And in the right side itself, the silicon needles are there, you can see the tip in silicon needle and if you compare this tip along with the conventional tip, you can imagine how nice needles can be made using silicon micro machining these are the micro needles and the right side you can see the micro pump. This is driven by electrostatic energy, electrostatic micro pump with two one way check valves. This is the inlet, this is the outlet, what is the principle of operation here and that is elect electrically driven that means, you have to have the two electrodes here and those electrodes either depending on the supply they can attract this is this is basically a diaphragm by electrostatic energy this diaphragm middle diaphragm can be attracted towards the upper diaphragm as a result of which this chamber the pump chamber will be at a low pressure. So, automatically due to the outside pressure the valve will open and the fluid will flow into the chamber. Now, if you release the diaphragm by again the electrostatic actuation by then this diaphragm will go down and it will put pressure on the fluid into the chamber. So, as a result of which this valve will close and this valve will open. So, if you pressure from inside this valve will open and the fluid can flow here. So, that means, in one valve you are sucking the fluid and other valve you are ejecting the fluid. So, just by using some the uh, electrostatic actuation it is made using three pieces, top piece, middle piece and bottom piece. There are four, four pieces, one, two, three, four and they are combined together by the wafer bonding technology. And this kind of the valve, micro valve or micro pump is used for sucking fluids during your the surgical operation and some other cases. Here some of the micro valves are shown which is designed by Redwood incorporated. This is commercially available some of the micro valves, which is used in biological application, biomedical application. So, uh, here I can just conclude that the biomedical application is, is really fascinating in case of MEMS and microsystems. I have not covered here the DNA synthesis and gene sequencing that required a thorough knowledge of the microorganism as well as the 
molecular chemistry, biochemistry and without the adequate knowledge of the biochemistry or cell biology, you cannot go for that. Anyway, some of the idea I gave you in different areas where the biosensors are made using micro machining technology. It may be inertial sensor, it may be chemical sensor, it may be gas sensor, it may be some neuron sensor for micro probes, micro needles and also I mentioned some of the uh, micro actuators which is used in case of micro surgery. So, with this let me stop today. aspiring to find ways to fulfill a dream lays the foundation of an institution that will give aspiring technocrats the license to fly high. The first Indian Institute of Technology is born at Kharagpur. Founded on the basis of the recommendations of the NR Sarkar committee that was set up in 1945 to consider the development of higher technical institutions in India, the institute was first established in 5 Esplanade East, Kolkata, before it moved to Kharagpur in 1951. With Sir Gyan Chandra Ghosh as the first director and Dr. B.C. Roy as one of its founding guardians, the institute established itself as the symbol of a young, dynamic and resurgent nation. As top students rub shoulders with the most celebrated of professors and scholars, visions took shape. And IIT Kharagpur continued to play the pioneering role that was envisaged for it, enabling India to become a knowledge powerhouse that it is today. Thank you. 